Let's take a look at this problem, taken from the Turkish Junior Mathematical Olympiad 2012. It says, prove that for all positive real numbers a, b, and c, such that a cubed plus b cubed plus c cubed equals a to the 4 plus b to the 4 plus c to the 4, the expression a over a squared plus b cubed plus c cubed plus b over b squared plus a cubed plus c cubed plus c over c squared plus a cubed plus b cubed is greater than or equal to 1. The condition given is not common. So we cannot deploy common substitution methods. We have to go back to the most elementary tools, AMGM or Cauchy's Ross. Look at the theorem statement. It seems Cauchy's Ross is more likely to work. So we need to make up some extra terms to multiply with the expression at the left hand side. There is one thing that we have to bear in mind when using the Cauchy's Ross inequality. The statement of the theorem consists of a lot of square terms. As you can see, there are so many square indices. And most people will try to rewrite the expression they have at hand into some of square terms. For example, if you are to show that x plus y plus z times 1 plus x over 1 plus y plus 1 over z is at least 9, then to match the shape, the form of the Cauchy's Ross inequality, beginners would rewrite the expression at left hand side as root x whole squared plus root y whole squared plus root z whole squared multiplied by 1 over root x whole squared plus 1 over root y whole squared plus 1 over root z whole squared. However, this slows the process a lot. The current flow is to first turn terms into squares, writing these square indices, so to match the form of the theorem statement of Cauchy's Ross, and then we multiply. So it will be at least root x times 1 over root x plus root y times 1 over root y plus, one of, plus root z times 1 over root z whole squared. And so we will get 1 plus 1 plus 1 whole squared, which is 9. But it will be much faster if we reverse our steps, which is to first multiply and then take square root. Let's use this example again. If we do the multiply step first, look at the corresponding terms. Then x times 1 over x is 1, y times 1 over y is also 1, and z times 1 over z is also 1. We square root these terms, they are again just 1, 1, and 1. So we can say this expression is at least 1 plus 1 plus 1 whole squared, which is just 9. Isn't this much faster? Why would reversing these steps speed up the process? It's because we often tend to make terms at the right hand side nice and simple. We want to apply this theorem. So if we do square roots on these nice and simple terms, it takes no time. However, if the square root step is done the expressions at the left hand side with lots of alphabets here and there, we have a lot of right, lots to simplify, which will take much more time. So doing things in the right order is actually very important. Now back to our problem. The ugliest things at the expression at the left hand side are the denominators. So of course we want to remove them. To do this, we multiply left hand side with a times a squared plus b cubed plus c cubed plus b times b squared plus c cubed plus a cubed and plus c times c squared plus a cubed 
plus b cube. Notice that I'm writing in pairs to show you the corresponding terms. Now, if I multiply the corresponding term first, then we will have a squared because we cancelled these denominators. And for the second and the third pairs, we will have b squared and c squared. So multiplying these two expressions, we will get by Cauchy's laws a plus b plus c whole squared at the right hand side because a squared, b squared, c squared have square roots to be a, b and c respectively. Now the expression on the left hand side of our original inequality by simplifying is actually greater than or equal to a plus b plus c whole squared divided by a cubed plus b cubed plus c cubed plus a cubed times b plus c plus b cubed times a plus c plus c cubed times a plus b. The next step that seems to be meaningful is to simplify the bunch of terms at the denominator at the right hand side now. It may seem to be the end of the story because we cannot factorize these bunch of terms, but do not forget the condition that we have is that a cubed plus b cubed plus c cubed, this part equals to a to the 4 plus b to the 4 plus c to the 4. So the denominator, the denominator can be rewritten as a to the 4 plus b to the 4 plus c to the 4 plus the rest of the terms. It seems this condition is deliberately made up for us to carry on from here because this part the denominator can be written as a cubed times a plus b cubed times b plus c cubed times c and then adding the rest. These terms a and b plus c can be grouped together because they have a common factor of a cubed. Similarly, b and a plus c can be grouped together as well. c and a plus b can do the same thing. So the terms at the denominator can actually be rewritten as a cubed plus b cubed plus c cubed times a plus b plus c because the common factors a cubed, b cubed, c cubed are all multiplying by a plus b plus c. So now we have some symmetry. And so we have the left hand side actually greater than or equal to a plus b plus c over a cubed plus c, b cubed plus c cubed. And now it remains to show that this expression is at least one. So how are we going to show that this new expression is at least one? Before telling you how I did it, I would like to introduce another important concept in proof of inequalities to you. It's called homogenization. This word is derived from homogeneous, here referring to expressions on both sides of inequalities having the same degree. Apparently, the degree of the numerator part and that of the denominator part are different. The degree for the numerator is just 1, and that for the denominator is 3. So, 
combining this fraction has a degree of minus 2 and because the right hand side is just a constant so degree is obviously 0 so for the inequality that we are supposed to prove it's not yet homogenized however looking back into the tools we have the left hand side of the statement for AMGM has degree 1 and that for the right hand side is actually 1 times n because there are n terms multiplying all together and then divided by n we take the n root so it's equal to 1 as for the cauchy schwarz inequality the degree for the polynomial at the left hand side is 2 plus 2 which is 4 and that at the right hand side is 2 times 2 which is also 4 so the theorems that we are using are homogenized while the inequality that we are supposed to prove is not so it might be a good idea to first homogenize the inequality that we are going to prove before moving on in fact the only tool we have to balance the degree is that is the fact that a cubed plus b cubed plus c cubed equals a to the 4 plus b to the 4 plus c to the 4 which means something of degree 3 is equal to something of degree 4. This can compensate for some differences in the degrees of the polynomials. So let's try to multiply the numerator by a to the 4 plus b to the 4 plus c to the 4 while multiplying the denominator by a cubed plus b cubed plus c cubed. This is valid because the two expressions are equal so the value of the whole expression is not affected but the degree for numerator is now 5 while that for denominator is 6 so we are one step closer why don't we multiply this expression squared instead then we can compensate the degrees as the degree at the numerator is now 1 plus 4 plus 4 which is 9 and that in the denominator is 3 times 3 which is again 9 so rearranging a bit we can say that it suffices to prove that a plus b plus c times a to the 4 plus b to the 4 plus c to the 4 whole squared is greater than or equal to a cubed plus b cubed plus c cubed whole cubed. This inequality is homogenized because both sides have degree to be 9. This inequality is actually true by another theorem called Helder's inequality, an extended version of cauchy schwarz here is the statement for a special case of this Helder's inequality. As you can see, look at degrees of corresponding terms. If I rewrite the inequality that I want to prove into a plus b plus c times a to the 4 plus b to the 4 plus c to the 4, multiply again, so which means I split out the squares the squared expression into repeated multiplication. Now you compare this product with the statement of Helder's inequality. So at Helder's inequality, you can see corresponding terms a, p, and x. They multiply together to get a cubed, p cubed, x cubed. Then we take cube root and we'll get APX, apparently a typo. Again, similar to Cauchy schwarz inequality, you should do the multiplying step first and then take the cube root. So now, looking back to our inequality, we have A times A to the 4 times A to the 4, which is A to the 9, and then we take cube root. So the corresponding terms should be a cubed and similar for b and c 
And so with this Helder's inequality, we're done. This inequality is true. And hence, the inequality that we are required to prove at the very beginning. I hope you enjoyed the video. Feel free to suggest any alternative methods in the comments. If you like my videos, make sure to subscribe to my channel right now by clicking on the subscribe button. Thank you for your support. See you next time.